Hey guys, this is Rick from Excel Gorilla and in this series I will show you how to calculate the same day growth in Power BI. Stay tuned! Hey guys, thanks for joining. In this session we're gonna work towards calculating a same day growth number and doing that involves a working day correction. And this is going to be a three episode series where we're going to be looking at how to calculate the same day growth by using working day ratios. And it's going to get like increasingly difficult the more we watch. So make sure to start from the beginning if you're new to this and then follow along with the next two sessions. I will try to explain what this is all about by just using some number examples. And I'm sure you'll be able to follow. So let's get to the numbers. So I prepared a Power BI file which looks as follows. Um, if we start from scratch, then we have one fact table. The fact table contains a product, a country, the date where the sale was made and the amount of sales. So very basic. And then we're looking at a division. Uh, each division contains three products and there's only a single division in this case. And then there's one more table which contains the countries. Some countries belong to a region. We're looking at the Benelux and Iberica. And then I have a calendar. And most importantly, what we're going to be working with is working days. So there's another fact table with working days. And they all come together in a data model just like this. Three dimension tables, two fact tables. Now, so what is the fuzz about making a working day correction to calculate the same day growth? Let's imagine we start an empty table. And in this table, I'd like to see the different months. So I'm going to have a month name. And I'd like to see the countries that we have. Also in the rows. Let's expand this so we can see all the different levels. And in my sales table, I made a measure that says total sales. And that's a simple sum of the amount field in the sales table. Perfect. Now this is now showing us the sales of two years because we have 2019 and 2020. So if I get myself a filter on the year and I put it in the filter pane, let's see if we can put a filter on 2020. So the numbers we're looking at are now the total sales for 2020. And let's see if we can compare that with the total sales for the year before that. And I haven't made any measures yet, so I'm going to try and see if you guys can follow. So in that case, you can do it for your own business as well, if necessary. Okay, so we're going to make a measure, which is the total sales prior year, which is equal to calculate the total sales. And on a new line, we'll write something that changes the filter context it's same period last year and we indicate our date column in the calendar and if we add this to the table yeah so one might now think that we have two numbers to compare we have the total sales and the total sales prior year now i'm going to show you the issue we have and the whole reason why i'm making this movie like, let's imagine we have another table. And in this table, we'd like to show our working days. And I need to make a measure that calculates the working days, which is the total sum of the value column in the working days. And if we add that to the table, and let's add some countries there too in the rows, and then I just want to see some month names and the year as well in the columns. And if we then just expand this to the next level, perfect. Now, if we have a look at this table, the problem with comparing the numbers we just did down here is going to appear. For example, look at Belgium for March. In March in 2019, Belgium has 22 working days. In 2020, Belgium has 21 working days. So if you didn't know that, you might compare the sales of Belgium for March, so down here, 
and think like, ah, well, the sales are very easily comparable. Uh, they just simply do much less this year compared to last year. But what you don't see here is that Belgium even in 20, 2020 has a little bit less working days. So this working day correction is made to make comparing a little bit more fair. That's the whole reason for the for the working days. So if we would simply have a total sales, if you don't adjust it, you have a total sales growth, which is the divide of, um, so you take your total sales minus total sales per year, and you divide it by the total sales per year. And you would normally get to your total sales growth. This is still the wrong growth. Okay. Now let's see if we can correct for this. First of all, I'd like to put the working days next to it. So it's clear for us uh, what kind of correction we're going to be making. So first of all, I'll put the working days here. And since we have a filter on 2020, this is only for 2020. Then we're going to make a working days measure for the working days last year. Working days by a year is calculate working days. And we're going to have to adjust the filter context to the same period, but last year. Okay. And we add it to the table. And let's now make a percentage to find out what, if, if I would divide the working days of this year by last year, we get a working days ratio. So this new measure I'll call WD ratio, just to abbreviate. Um, let's write the formula right here. So it's divide the working days by the working days from prior year. And if we now add the working days prior year and the working day ratio, then we can actually see what's going on here. So each of the each of the lines where the working day ratio is unequal to one, it would require us to adjust last year's numbers so that we can use the last year's numbers that are adjusted to compare it to this year and calculate a same day growth ratio, uh, a same day growth. Okay, so since we know the ratio now, the step left is to divide the sales of last year by, let's see, by the ratio. So we're gonna make one last measure and it's total sales prior year and we'll put adjust it there. And it's the total sales prior year multiplied by the working day ratio. Here we go. Okay. Now, if we take a short look at this, then if you would go for, um, let's have a look at Luxembourg in January. It had 950 sales in this year, 800 in last year, but last year it had less working days. So instead of comparing 950 with 800, we now compare 950 with 838. That includes the correction for the working days. Then there is just one, oh, one measure left. I made a mistake. Let's see. Okay. The one measure that's left is to do the total sales growth, growth, and then SD for same day is divide the total sales by the total sales prior year adjusted. Okay. Oh, and I'm making one mistake. I should remove the total sales minus total sales prior year because otherwise we don't have a growth percentage. And we put it as a percentage, just like the other one. And as you can see, the ones that have a workday ratio that's different than one, their total sales growth same day is different from their total sales growth than the other one was before. Now, one might think that just by doing this, we finished, but there's a catch. 
So each of these working day uh, ratios is calculated correctly for the countries. But when you have a look at the month level, what's happening is all the working days are added together for all the countries, and then they are divided by each other to get a percentage. And this percentage on the month level is multiplied by the last year of all the different countries. And to have a more accurate same day number, it should actually only multiply the same day ratio in the country where the ratio was calculated. So the numbers that we're looking at, they're not correct. So the total sum of these rows of sales do not equal the sum of the, the bold part right here. And the same issue goes if we duplicate this page and we would turn around the country for the month and I again expand the entire level. Also here you're going to find that the sum of each of the months does not equal the sum of the, of the countries. 500, 900 and 811.36 never equals 22, 14, 84. You can even see it by everything uh, behind the last decimal. It says here 0 0.84 and there it should be 0 0.36. So in this short video, I've shown you the issues you have with making a working day correction. And we've handled some part of it and understand the essence, but we've only gotten just started. In the next session, I'll show you what kind of DAX formulas you can use to calculate the right working day ratio, not just on the, on the level of the lowest granularity, but also the groupings in the subtotals. And if that works out, we're also going to have a third session, which is also upcoming. Now, I really hope you liked this video. If you did, please like it below, subscribe to my channel, and I hope to see you in the next episode of this series.